What's going on YouTube? It's Pelfrey and here we are in the garage once again. <clears throat> so if you've watched any of my videos recently, you understand that I turned this valve on to fill up my 10 gallon, 10 gallon brute container to do a water change. And I did, I did it kind of slow and I thought to myself, well, I'm going to just turn it on and I'm going to go in the house and I'm gonna come back out here and everything's going to be good to go. Well, I end up pretty much draining the whole barrel. So although these barrels are connected, there are two valves here. So if this one's on then that one's closed, so it can't drain it. So <clears throat> long story short, I end up draining 20 gallons out of this container. So, so I'm filling it up right now. I have the RO line coming in. And once I get this filled up, I'll just move it over here and I'll go ahead and top this one off while I'm at it. By the way, I have some stickers here from some people you probably know. Billy Pipes, DC Reefer, Reefer Gill, uh, Reef Tees, Mike Living, Murphy's Aquatics, SaltwareAquarium.com, Murphy's Aquatics, YouTube.com slash Pelfrey, Algae Barn, Bata Corals, VCA, Top Shelf Aquatics, Reef to Reef, uh, Bud Man's Corals, and Swing Set stuff, because I built a swing set out back. But... <clears throat> Oh, Neptune Aquatics, although I don't have any Neptune stuff at the moment. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm filling this up. And if, you, if you're not familiar with this, what I do is I just run RO line through here, follow my finger, it's going down, it's going under here, and then it's going into the laundry room over here. <clears throat> so, everything is working out well. Zero TDS water, I've got some stuff up here. Shout out to Scurvy's Reef. This is the uh, ice cap 1K pump that I need to send back to them. I got some pinky uh, filter stuff up there. I need to order some more. I'm, cl I'm close to running out of it. I cut sections of it out and I just dropped a section here. But I cut sections out and this is all I got left. That'll fit in my little filter tray. So I need to order some more. <clears throat> I do use the top brute for water changes. Remember this one got spray painted by accident, so I don't use it anymore. Top one's good for water changes, the bottom one right there. Sometimes I use it whenever I drain water out of the tank. Big brute, used it once. I had to buy it because I needed it at the time. So now it's just sitting up there. Fish tank stuff, fish tank stuff, and buckets and whatnot. So <clears throat> as you can see, I got the RO line right out here. <clears throat> it's probably, if I had to guess, 30 feet. A bar o line runs into the laundry room, comes up, comes up, and then it connects here all the way up to the Spectra Pure CSP DI 90 gallons manual flush. So, manual flush means that if I want to flush, I have to turn this valve right here. It'll kick the booster pump off and it'll go, the, the valve here will go down significantly. So, as you can hear, the booster pump's running. My input TDS is 136. 137, line two is 000, line out is 000, which is perfect. But I did see some discoloration in this filter, so I'll probably pick up these two filters right here, and go ahead and get them replaced. I did do an eight gallon water change as we walk into where the tank is, and I'm gonna cut right here, turn the lights on a spectrum we can all view. Got the radions turned up 100% on everything so that we can see what's going on. I did leave the rock scape alone for the time being, and I still have a piece of rock in the sump. And the reason I don't have the cabinet open is because the light that I use in the cabinet, it's on the charger, so there's really no point in showing you that right now. But I did notice this Anchinata here is really, really struggling there. But I think that was before, from before I moved it. And this hammer coral, excuse me, torch coral. I'm gonna probably have to move it. And then look how dirty this thing is already. It hasn't been there very long and it's dirty. And we'll just go get a quick glimpse at the other 65, 60, 55, and it's, it's pretty dirty. So yeah, I left the rockscape alone. Everything's doing pretty well. I do have some of the mushrooms, kind of hard to see, but they're back there in the back, just being where they need to be. The fish are doing great. 
I do actually have some frozen food here with some Celcon and some Benepets. Um, the dry food there. We do have our Christmas tree up. I'll go ahead and show you that. But yeah, everything's doing great. I did clean the Radions a little bit today. Uh, wiped them down, they had some dust on them. They probably still have a little bit of dust on them. I did clean the outside glass and I still need to clean the inside glass. I did pull the Tunes 3155 sensor because I've been having issues with the optical sensor not detecting when the water level is, is low. And I know I've mentioned this before, but you know, I have a keen eye, keen hearing to my system. As soon as I can hear a waterfall, I know that something's going wrong. And it's happened three times now that the tunes optical sensor is not picking up where the low water volume is. And I'm gonna just go ahead and throw a picture in right here. of the optical sensor before I cleaned it, and then a picture here. Of the optical sensor after I cleaned it. I just soaked it in vinegar. I didn't even put water in there. I thought to myself, I'm just gonna throw it in some vinegar. But the, uh, both the float switch and the optical sensor had quite a bit of crud built up on it, so. It was well due for a cleaning, and to be honest with you, I haven't cleaned it that often in, to begin with. So I don't know if it's just because I'm not running a skimmer anymore or really what the issue is, but you know, it is what it is. I got it cleaned, got it go, I got it back in the tank. So I do want to mention this yellow grass has like exploded with growth. And I don't know why. I mean, the tank gets fed twice a day with the auto feeder, but it's, it's probably tripled in size since I got the yellow rass right here and I love this guy. The yellow tank has grown just a little bit but it's still probably only like three inches. The coral beauty has just always been a magnificent fish. But yeah, I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do with the rockscape. I don't know if I'm gonna leave this here or not but you can see I do have some of the dreaded starfish back here just going to town on the coralline algae and it is what it is i mean truth be told i mean whatever they're in the tank and i could get a harlequin shrimp harlequin blah, 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 harlequin shrimp but at the end of the day how am i going to feed that thing after i've paid 30 40 bucks for it plus shipping you know 70 dollars to get it here how am i going to feed it you know, I'm going to have to end up buying starfish, the chocolate starfish or whatever to feed it. So it's just not worth it. I just don't have enough of the Asturian starfish in the tank to worry about it. And I know that some people say, well, the Asturian starfish mess with Zoas for sure. Well, I don't have to worry about that. I don't keep Zoas. I don't care for Zoas. They're just not my thing. I don't like anything about them because of the toxicity of them. So, you know, there's a Asturian there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 that I can count off right off the, the bat, but it just, I'm not gonna buy anything as far as a shrimp that I'm gonna have to provide starfish for to outcompete the Asturian starfish that are in the tank. And I'm sure there are some in the sump. I'm sure that there's some in the catomorph or whatever, but I'm just, I'm just not gonna deal with it, you know? So maybe your opinion is something different than mine, but it is what it is at that point. But I'm just rambling on, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off here. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Pelfrey's Reef. Check out the website at pelfrey.net. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.